पे है एट क्यूब कॉन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू द डे इज ओवर इज द डे ओवर ऑलमोस्ट ऑलमोस्ट एंड इट हैज बिन अ ग्रेट एक्सपीरियंस एंड वी हैव प्रियंका पीपल हु मेक इट हैपन एंड फुल मूव फॉरवर्ड प्रियंका हाउ वाज योर एक्सपीरियंस एट दिस क्यूब कॉन इट वाज सो अमेजिंग आई थिंक फाइनली वी आर ऑल बैक ऑन ट्रैक आफ्टर द पेंडेमिक एंड वेल स्टिल ऑन गोइंग बट people are much more comfortable hanging out in person and what do you think is uh, different at so so keep on happens like almost twice every year yes and uh, you know you have so many tracks you have so many other things but for an event that happens so regularly what do you think was different this time well so many things were different i think well we were in a brand new city yeah. detroit which has been a i loved the experience it was Good very different yeah <laughs> yeah and it's like the people mover is nice you can just take that So we were in a very different environment which meant a lot of different types of people could drive in come into the conference. Um I think there was this energy that we haven't seen since the pandemic started which was really nice and I think the technologies are also evolving that we are seeing. So every KubeCon yeah. will be different and this is just like that. Yeah and so every KubeCon there's like a discussion happening this time I spoke to like more close to 300 people mm-hmm. and everyone was saying ebpf mm-hmm. and security and and wasm and all things around that but yeah thanks thanks a lot for joining priyanka um can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what goes into running such a huge conference and uh, how do you make sure that you are you know we often talk about some huge advocate for inclusivity and, mm-hmm. and diversity so how do you make sure that that's like a key focus as well uh, at event because sometimes they might be as, as an organizer there are events that are sorry there are their needs that are fulfilled for the mm-hmm. attendees they need sometimes that might not be fulfilled so how you make sure that you have that balance to make sure that you know everyone feels inclusive at such a huge event 10000 people um how do you do it so a lot goes into organizing a kubecon cloud native con i or anybody else could not do it alone we have a lovely team uh, uh, headed by lf events that works on these events um uh, every year twice a year as you said um and it is imperative for us to be inclusive of anyone and everyone who wants to join us and the only way to 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 really make that happen is to bake that ethos into all the operationalizing that goes on there need to be ch- like it's actually really the boring stuff of having checkpoints of having um uh, tasks that need to be completed for each section whether it is what kind of food are we choosing what kind of location is it um and that's why for example detroit's been actually very inclusive um in speaking as you know kubecon speaking slots matter a lot and we track the diversity metrics for each event and push ourselves as uh with the co-chairs and program committee to keep upping those numbers so the only way to be truly inclusive is to keep working on it in a systematic and organized fashion. Yeah, could not agree more. Yeah, I'm a coach for the student track and mm-hmm. that's it's made very clear that you have to be inclusive and you have to give there's a, there's a dedicated section for first time speakers as well. Yes. I believe it's pretty awesome. So, I was talking to so many people and saw some announcement, so many new projects. Mm-hmm. Um so, so what has that been like uh from like the CNCF point point of view? What are you doing in order to make sure that the folks who are donating their projects to the CNCF uh you know the what are what are the what are, basically what are the expectations that they have and how is cncf helping them uh when they you know take on board the project sure i think uh, we're in a very lucky position where a lot of projects want to proactively come to the cncf and i think it's because of our track record of supporting uh, different technologies one of the things that cncf does best is helping projects tell their story and that is through all kinds of marketing efforts even cloud kubecon mm-hmm. cloud native cons are are an avenue for that so are our case studies so are our humans of cloud native program and being that voice is really helpful at this point we've also built our reputation in the industry so that end users look for the stamp of approval from cncf and it helps projects get distribution just by getting in and so i think on those core high level things we do a very good job but it's you know the road to progress is mm. always ongoing we've really as you know we've invested a lot in the security posture of cncf projects and it's very strong we're also working hard to support them with their sustainability with helping maintainers get the time they need from their employers to be successful so every month every year mm. there'll be different things we need to do for projects and it is my hope and belief that 
at the very least, we are doing our very best. Yeah, and projects were really happy. Like, I mean, I met so many people, they were excited. Like, oh, we are in incubating now. Yay. We are sandbox now. So, <laughs> congrats if you are. And uh, if, we, if, yes. if, we, if we talk about it, um, so talking more about the, the event, what were your like favorite highlights for this uh, for the Detroit KubeCon? Any specific talks you really liked or keynotes or any shout outs you want to give? I think overall the event quality was super high. I'm going to give a fun shout out, which is to the Donuts and Cider <laughs> booth that was in the show floor. Best donuts I've had in a very long time and just fun. I think the all attendee party was a great time. I really, I was only able to actually be in two of the three venues, but so many people came up, had a conversation. Many of them first time at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. This time, 65%, I think, of the audience was first timers. It's a super high number. Is that, is that including virtual or? Uh, I'm speaking only of uh, in, in person. person right now. Yes. And uh, so just we've been able to welcome a lot of people. In terms of the content, I can't choose favorites. <laughs> I think the co-located uh, events gave an opportunity. Like, you know, Wasm Day was like serious, deep, uh, high level, not high level, um, advanced level uh, technical content. And then you had some of the more, uh, you know, more earlier stage ones. So I liked that diversity. I, I think the cruise keynote was a big favorite of mine because they're such an interesting end user who are really... Um, pushing the boundaries of how uh, cloud native technologies can be used. So those are just a few examples. And of course, oh, Ehor's message yeah, was good. the very best. Yeah, that was very good. I met Ehor and uh, um, so nice to see him on stage. And when he came on stage, everyone was like, I could hear yeah. the, everyone was clapping. It was very, yes. very good to see. Um, also, um, you know, we, we were mentioning about, so by the way, all the, Keynotes and everything that we are mentioning, it's all going to be live on the mm -hmm. CNCF YouTube channel later on. And so they have processed the video. So if you missed anything, you can check it out. Um, but for folks who were not able to attend in person, yes. I know CNCF has this virtual entity to it. Yes. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? And also, you know, you have um, this KCDs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what is the focus around these local meetups? Sure. So um, the virtual element, as you said, is available to anyone who cannot attend KubeCon Cloud Native Con in person. It's one of the ways we are more inclusive. Um, in terms of more regional events, um, Kubernetes Community Days were something we tried out to see if people would want. They are community organized, CNCF supported. And their response was just amazing. And that's kind of how we roll, actually, at CNCF. We try lots of things. And then the community just tells us this is working and this is not. So we know where to direct our resources. Anybody can decide to host a KCD. They just have to follow a set of guidelines and process details. And so I encourage anyone who is in whatever city you might be in, let's say you could even be in Antarctica. We, that's the one we haven't had for <laughs> yet, right? KCD Antarctica can happen if you in the research centers over there want to create one. So this, anybody and everybody has the opportunity. Amazing. And one question I've been meaning to ask you quite a lot yeah. is, when are we having a KubeCon Asia? The, the number of contributors in itself from Asia is just, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, China so, is the number two contributor. Yeah, so this, yeah, we used to have KubeCon China, but, yes. but can we have like in KubeCon Asia sometime in the future <laughs> or something? I think we definitely need to have more Asia Pacific events. Yeah. You know, uh, what form like they take. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. What form they take will, you know, depend on what, what that ecosystem wants, you know, and the, it's, it becomes very clear when we actually like survey the area of, uh, both from attendees and companies' perspective. So, but yes, I 100% agree with you. More Asia presence needed. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing, Priyanka. My one last question to you is, yes. what are you looking forward to uh, Amsterdam, the next, next KubeCon? Well, just going to Amsterdam will be awesome. It's a great place. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've only been there when I was five years old, so it's basically I haven't been there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm excited to check out a beautiful new city. I think uh, being in Europe is always refreshing because you see slightly different trends. And um, so things... So things move slightly differently over there. Uh, and I'm eager to check out what's happening. I also think, given how the world has been lately, uh, it'll be nice to check in on our European friends. Amazing. And I'm in London now. So I'm, All right. I'm, I'm a part of the European friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. Uh, thanks for joining, everyone. Um, one last thing was... Yes. Okay. Thanks for joining, everyone. The CFPs are actually open mm -hmm. for Europe. So you, you all can submit that and uh, check out 
CNCF. Yeah, all yes. the great work they do and all the amazing events, localized events. Uh, and uh, KCDs. I'm actually speaking at KCD London next oh, month. Oh, fun. So that's going to be fun. Have you heard of uh, Cloud Native Security Con? Yeah. That is coming yeah, too. That's so, coming too. Uh, yeah. February 1 and 2 in Seattle. So check that out. Amazing. Well, thanks for joining everyone. And uh, yeah, happy KubeCon. Happy KubeCon. Happy <laughs> KubeCon.